Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to be learning how to make a bar graph using the library bouquet uh, within Python. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. Okay, so I'm inside Python. And so we're going to start by loading our libraries. So we have several libraries that we need to uh, install, obviously. So here they are. We're going to start in line number one here with the Pi dataset. Pi dataset, it has a lot of little simple data sets that you can use, you know, to, you know, explore how to use different tools in Python. Then we're going to import pandas because we have to do a little bit of data preparation. Next, the last two lines there in that first cell is going to be uh, libraries associated with bouquet. So bouquet.plotting, we're going to import figure that allows us to make our X and Y axes and also to include our glyphs. That'll make more sense in a minute. And then in our last line here, we're going to be importing from bouquet.io, the output file that creates our actual HTML file. And we're also going to import show, which will actually show our plot. Now, next, we're going to go ahead and set up our data. Well, let me run this first. Okay, so that's done. And we're going to use a data set from Pi data set called Duncan. And so here it is right there. We're going to go ahead and take a quick look at this so that you know what it's about. Sorry about that. So what's going to happen here is that we're going to create a object called DF right here, and it's going to consist of data from the Duncan Pi data set. So this is our little function that allows us to access the data. And then we're just going to display this information using this dot head right here. So go ahead and take a look at that. And so here's our data. So in this first column, this is kind of like our row names. So we have different occupations. Their type in the next one, income, education, and prestige is measured on a scale from zero to 100. And so that's pretty much all there is to that. Now, next, we have to prepare our data. We want to make a bar graph. So we're not trying to plot individual points. Instead, we're going to calculate the means for prestige based on the different uh, position types. So we, you can't see it here, but there's three position types. WC, which stands for white collar. BC stands for blue collar. And PROF, or P-R-O-F, stands for professional. So let's go ahead and prepare this and then we'll display it. All right. So right here in this first line, what we're doing here is we are creating an object called positions. And so what we're doing next is we're going to call our DF data set, which is all this information up here. We're going to group by type and we put index false. So we don't want an actual index or another column, if you will, that, that gives like row names or row, the names for the rows, if you will. Next, we're going to uh, filter this by prestige, if you will, and we want to calculate the mean of prestige. So what this one line of code is basically doing here is that we're grouping all of our data here by the type. So all the white colors together, all the blue colors together, they're all going to be in their own little group. And then we're going to calculate the mean of prestige for each of these groups. And so when you see this, you'll understand. So you can see right here, here's our results, as you can see. So blue collar, the average level of prestige was 22.7. Professional, the average prestige was 80.4. And white collar, the average prestige was 36.6. Again, this is on a scale, I believe, of up to 100. Now, we're going to take this little object that we just made called positions, and this is what we're going to use for actually making our bar graph. That is our goal. So we're going to go ahead and call our next little line of code here. I'll show you in a second. All right, here we go. This is our final line, our final cell, excuse me. And so right here in this first line, this is our fig. This is where we set up the information for our, our actual figure that we're going to make our actual bar, uh, bar plot or bar graph, if you will. So we call the figure function. We give the X axis a label. Then we give the Y axis a label. And then this is the range of, of different groups, basically. So remember, we're doing this by type. So that's the X range. You have to include this, of course. Next, in our next line here, we're going to be setting up our actual bar graph here. And so we're going to be using a new 
method or function called V bar that makes the, the bars go up and down, vertical bar, if you will. And so on the X axis, we're, we're basically subsetting from position the type. And then right here, this is kind of when they say top, this is kind of your Y axis, if you will, if you want to think of it like that. And then this width argument, this is so that there's a little bit of space in between our bars. If the bars are touching, technically it's a histogram, but we're not making a histogram. I don't want to be too technical on that. And then right here, we're going to have our, our actual output file. This is going to be our output file function. And then the file name is right here, prestige.html. So this is if you want to you know, save it and, and use it somewhere else. And then we're going to use the show function to show our actual fig here. So we're going to go ahead and run this. There you go. I'm sure you can see that nice and clear. And so there you go. There you have it. That's our actual bar graph right there. You can clearly see that we have the three different types as to be expected. And they're on a scale here as to be expected from zero to 100. You can see I can interact with it if I want. Uh, let's see here, reposition. All right. And so there you have it. There's not much more to this. You can see we have positions on the X axis, prestige on the Y axis. You can see um, professionals have the highest level of prestige. And that's pretty much it. This was not a complicated video, very simple. Now, there are other things we can do. You know, we can add titles and we can put not annotations on the actual bar graph, but that's for another time. We've covered the interaction of features over here because that's what makes Bokeh one of its unique features is the ability to interact with the actual text or excuse me, the, the bar graph. So panning like this, uh, zooming in like that if you want. These are all things you can do. Resetting. This has all been covered in a prior video. So that's essentially all that needs to be discussed here. So let's summarize what we have learned and conclude the video. So in this particular video, we looked at how to make a bar graph using Bokeh, one of many data visualization libraries available in Python. So the process was relatively simple. We just loaded the libraries that we needed, did a little bit of data preparation by calculating some group means. And then right here is just, you know, four lines of code in one cell and you're essentially done. You set up the X and Y labels, the range, you tell the data in the, in the second line here, what, where the data is coming from and add an argument to make sure there's space between the actual bars. And then you just output and show it. That's it. So, um, our final results was right here as you've already seen and that's it. So again, I want to thank you so much for listening and watching this particular uh, video. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the director of educational research techniques. Thank you again for watching and you take care.